Fort Meade Community Stalwart, really a legend, Lieutenant Colonel Alfred Shehab is laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery this week. More on that story in just a moment. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, our first look at the new Army Personnel and Pay app, and Fort Meade participates in the dedication of the new World War I Memorial. Those stories and more, but first, at this week's Installation Town Hall, Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland gave the community what it wanted to hear concerning Rock and Bog Gate. On March 15th, that's Monday, it is opening. No ifs, no ands, no buts. It is opening. Okay. So what does the opening mean? As the Colonel stated, starting March 15th, Rock and Bock Gate is opening. At the same time, the Reese Road Gate is adjusting its hours before closing the following week. The Rock and Bock Gate will be open from 5.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. on weekdays. The Reese Road Gate will be open from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. Then it'll close a week later on March 22nd. It's closing in order to complete work on a $30 million renovation. During the construction, the Visitor Control Center will remain open. The MAPES 175 and the MAPES 32 gates are not impacted by these changes. You can watch the town hall in its entirety on our Facebook page. Just click on videos. Elsewhere, a Fort Meade legend, Lieutenant Colonel Alfred Shehab, was laid in his final resting place this week at Arlington National Cemetery. Colonel Shehab passed away December 12th last year at the age of 101. A fixture at the annual massing of the colors, it was just a tiny part of his involvement and in service to Fort Meade and the surrounding community. Here's a clip from an interview from a couple of years ago with Public Affairs' Ben Rogers, who also provided the images from Arlington, about a life-changing moment at the Battle of the Bulge. And I stepped into this far lane in Belgium, and there's a German soldier, and we're looking at each other. Now, he started to raise his rifle. This figure had been trained in basic training to move when somebody threatens, and I killed him. And in the meantime, the patrol found out. Mac and I went up to this fellow to see if he had any maps or anything. And I pulled a picture of a woman and two little girls. And at that, this is my first kill, and all I could think was, what the heck have I done? I've killed this man, I've ruined this family that has stayed. You can watch the entire video on our YouTube channel. Look for it in the highlights section. In other news, the Army recently announced that the new Human Resources and Pay System, known as the Integrated Personnel Pay System, or IPPSA, will be deployed to the entire force by December. This means that for the first time ever, personnel, pay, and talent management will be integrated into a single online system for 1.1 million users across the Army. Hello, and welcome to IPSA. Today, we're going to give you a sneak peek at the IPSA mobile app and show you how to access the system on the go. This is what the IPSA mobile app looks like once it's downloaded from the U.S. Army Training and Doctor and Command Tag App Store. When the app first launches, it takes you directly to the home view of the app, providing the user the ability to access the IPSA DS login page at the click of a button. From the home view of the mobile app, press the yellow button that says IPSA DS Login. After the login page loads, from here you'll have an option of logging in using your DS Login username and password. To learn more about IPSA, please visit us at ipsa.army.mil. We'll have more on the new system on future editions of Mead Week. Meanwhile, a virtual event is coming up you might want to take a note of. The new National World War I Memorial will raise the U.S. flag for the first time in ceremonies April 16th. Fort Meade got its start in 1917 as a training base for soldiers deploying to Europe. And so fittingly, the garrison was asked to participate in the virtual ceremony. Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland will say a few words during the program. Event host Gary Sinise has more. Please join me on April 16th for the first colors ceremony, where we will, for the very first time, raise the American flag over the new National World War I Memorial in Washington, D.C. Together, we'll be making history. We protect our future by remembering our past. And finally this week, the latest episode of our podcast, Fort Meade Declassified, is available. Hosts Sherry Kuyper and Joe Nieves talk with Drake Smith, a senior at Meade High and a student member of the Anne Arundel County Board of Education. Fort Meade Declassified is available wherever you get your podcasts. And that's Meade Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Meade TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Meade Week.